Yesterday, I spoke to Prime Minister Trudeau. He offered to provide assistance where needed to help us respond to the immediate disaster, as well as working with communities to rebuild going forward. The province has now formally requested that deployment of federal resources, including the armed forces, to assist with evacuations, managing of supply chains and resupply chains, security in inundated areas, as well as restoration of safe drinking water and other logistics assistance. I want people to know, first of all, that the federal government has been engaging with the uh, local authorities, with the province. Uh, I spoke with the Premier, I spoke with a number of mayors last night uh, to talk about how people are uh, doing in this terrifically bad situation. Um, we're also uh, working with them on uh, saving people, on sending resources uh, like the Canadian Armed Forces to uh, support people in this situation, but also uh, we'll be there for the cleanup and the rebuilding after uh, the impacts of these extreme weather events. We continue to follow the latest developments out of British Columbia. Earlier today, a province-wide state of emergency was declared as the cleanup and evacuation efforts are underway. The federal government has approved the deployment of Air Force personnel to assist with evacuating residents, aid supply chain routes, and help with the ongoing efforts to protect residents against further flooding and landslides. Meanwhile, in Abbotsford, 184 people were successfully rescued overnight by helicopters and boats, but there are currently about 100 people that are still believed to be stranded. Well, for the latest on the ground in B.C., let's bring in CTV's David Malko, who joins us live from the Chilliwack Airport. Uh, we appreciate you joining us uh, for your third night to talk about the ongoing situation there. Uh, so, first off, what, what's happening there tonight? What are some of the ongoing uh, efforts to uh, help a lot of these uh, individuals? Yeah, Jamie, good to be back with you tonight. In the last 24 hours, you'll remember last night I said things were going from bad to worse. I ha I'm happy to say that the Fraser Valley, I would say this evening, is feeling a collective sigh of relief, and that's how I'll put it. I've got some updated numbers for you, actually. The Sioux Mass Prairie between me and Abbotsford, right, 20 kilometers to the west or so. Remember, we're about an hour and a half east of Vancouver. Farmland, the valley, the highways still essentially cut off. But in terms of rescues, the numbers were just updated. We're down to two or three people out there on the prairie who are awaiting rescue or awaiting help because it sounds like, from the latest updates, the floodwaters are starting to go down. I don't want to diminish the pain and anguish of anybody who's either lost their life or their livelihood. Uh, but that's certainly optimism. Uh, let me tell you about something else here. As a plane starts up its engines behind me, this is really the lifeline here, right? right? We've got choppers coming in and out, rescue teams, search and rescue, hospital supplies, you name it, it's been happening here all day. But the thing I want to tell you about is this pump station mm -hmm. up here. The Sumas Prairie, sea level, uh, basically. And then the river runs maybe two or three meters above. This used to be a lake before the 1920s. And essentially what happened last night is they thought that pump station was going to fail, that the entire Fraser River was going to start spilling into that and recreate the lake from the 1920s. Mother Nature kind of taking over pre-development, if you will. What happened was incredible. Uh, there was a Facebook group here in Chilliwack where people put out the call saying, we need your help sandbagging. They managed to get 40,000 sandbags along sort of the emergency route, the back roads in the province did in coordination, but it was volunteers, retired military, firefighters. I talked to a teacher at a local college. They were out there all night stacking up 40,000 sandbags, making this ring around this pump station like a dam so that it could keep running, so that the river didn't spill over, so that the flood water waters would diminish and those that so more people did lose their homes Jamie incredible yeah and the Abbotsford mayor uh, Braun he's been cautioning people to stay away from the Sumas Prairie especially given the fact that if there's another major weather event over the next couple days you know you're talking about going from bad to worse and that's exactly the situation that would play out there you know and and there's that there's this obvious caution and and no one who shouldn't be in there, should be in there. 
uh, if that made any sense. My words are getting muddled up, but you know what I me meant there. The, the sense of optimism, though, too, with hope is 24 hours ago, we weren't seeing anybody in there. We saw these messages coming out saying, if you're in there, call 911 or tell us where you are so we can rescue, our, rescue you. Today, a little bit of a different story, especially this afternoon, because at the checkpoints, they were letting farmers in to check on their property. They were letting feed trucks in to uh, deliver to livestock, at least on this side of the prairie. The other side, the western side, those where we've seen those incredible images of cattle clambering to safety through the floodwaters. Uh, and I'm sa it's sad, of course, to report that thousands and thousands of cattle, chickens, others have died. You know, this is essentially the most fertile spot in the entire province, an incredible loss. But as of right now, uh, and, and this is somewhat miraculous as well, as far as we know, in this general area, Chilliwack, Abbotsford, on that prairie, all that farmland, 2,000 or so homes, uh, not a single loss of life. If there's one thing we've learned, especially from the fires over the summer in B.C., is that the, the people of British Columbia are very resilient uh, and it's a, a very tight-knit community no matter where you go. I'm curious, given the fact that so many people's lives have been flipped upside down, they've lost their livelihood, uh, many of these, uh, the crops and the agriculture has been destroyed, uh, how are people feeling? What, what's the sentiment And when you, when you speak to some of these individuals? How are they coping right now? <laughs> 24 hours ago, I would have told you everyone was on edge, Jamie. This morning, I would have said people were worried about getting gas and, and picking up bread and milk and water at the supermarket. Uh, by the way, we're out of all those things, including mm. eggs and toilet paper, and the gas stations are running low. There's still some dry goods there. The, tonight, I'm going to use the word hopeful and optimistic, two words, actually. And here's why. You know, I talked to a couple. Their names are Joe and Jennifer Pinder. They're from the Lower Mainland. They were up hunting together with family in the Merritt area. Talk about a, a, a bad place to be when all this went down, right? They landed here this afternoon uh, and were emotional. They were hugging family. She was crying, saying, I can't believe we finally almost made it home. Not only were they stuck up in the Merritt area, then they almost got ca caught in one of those mudslides just by meters, they said, on the highway. Went back to the Village of Hope about an hour up the road here. Perfect strangers took them in. And what he said to me, Joe Pinder, was simply this, and I think it captures the spirit, uh, the spirit of what we're feeling here and that hopefulness is he said, I just want to thank everybody out there from the person that took us in and gave us warm beds to the volunteers, to the search and rescue crews. He said, it is tremendous, simply tremendous. CTV, CTV's uh, David Malko, we appreciate uh, you joining us once again and for your fantastic reporting and live on the ground in uh, Chilliwack, BC. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. And joining us now with more is the Executive Director of Recovery and Relief Services, Incorporated, Jeremy Stone. Thank you so much for joining us. You know, you know we were talking just uh, before with David about, you know, many of these farmers who were allowed to go back to their check on their crops and some of their, their, uh, their livestock. I can't imagine the economic toll this is going to take on the people of B.C. Tell us a little bit about uh, what uh, your organization is doing uh, and aiding in these uh, recovery efforts. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. Um, you know, basically, we focus on economic resilience and recovery. Um, these are early days. You know, people are not necessarily thinking today about, well, how do I get back in business? And, you know, what are the business resources available? So right now, it's mostly just supporting people uh, with information and, and other uh, knowledge around, um, you know, what to prepare for, how to get ready. Um, I think the, the big um, impact is going to be in the weeks to come. And speaking in the weeks to come, I, the holidays are just right around the corner, and I'm sure a lot of these uh, local businesses are, are relying on that increase in business around the holiday time. You know, for anyone who's watching us uh, here in, in Toronto, a lot of people want to help out. That's what Canadians do in times of crisis. Uh, what can the average Canadian do uh, to assist some of these people who no doubt are going to go through a very tough uh, economic time? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think uh, several things. You know, one uh, is definitely buy uh, anything online from BC or, or anything that you see in the store. If it says BC made, um, buy it now and in bulk. Um, you know, if you have any uh, produce or, or other, um, you know, food goods that you see in your stores that are, are from BC, please buy them because a lot of those farmers are going to be hit uh, really soon. Um, they're looking at $30 billion worth of loss in the Fraser Valley. So, I mean, it's going to be a, a huge, huge loss. Uh, but then also going online for holiday shopping, anything uh, that's located out west here would be great to support. 
Um, I would also make a pitch for tourism. Um, you know, for a while, there's going to be some really significant brand damage for um, the Vancouver area, Lower Mainland, um, and other parts of BC. So if you're thinking of, well, you know, now that I can travel a little bit and COVID is receding, where can I go? Definitely consider coming out to the province of BC because, um, you know, many of our, our tourism attractions are still there. Once some of the roads are reopened, you'll be able to get around. And, and the, the worst thing right now would be to have, you know, a loss on the ski hills or other, you know, tourism-dependent communities because of, of these floods. I'm looking at the, the landscape and these aerial footage. It's just absolutely stunning and heartbreaking. Earlier today, I saw several pieces of footage of some of these farmers with, who were guiding some of their cattle that were literally neck deep in water. I can't imagine the impact this is having on farming and agriculture. And uh, I'm curious, I asked David uh, Malko from CTV this question. I want to ask you the same thing is, is from speaking to people who have been affected by this, how are people coping? What's the sentiment that, that you're seeing uh, from your perspective? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think, you know, first and foremost, I, I just want to point out what, you know, what, what a wonderful story about humanity is seeing those uh, those film clips and whatnot uh, of people out there saving animals, you know, even though their their livelihoods, you know, they depend on the horses and cattle, et cetera, just to see such a stupendous effort by these folks to to rescue animals to me is is an amazing story. And I think that, you know, just on a human level, we should be applauding this. Um, but, you know, I think from the, the economic perspective, um, you know, there's a lot of fear of what this is going to, how this is going to play out, um, you know, not just from a supply chain perspective. You know, I think everyone in the cities are, are sort of nervous right now because they're worried about, you know, where the food is going to come from. Um, you know, the Fraser Valley uh, feeds, you know, a, a considerable amount of the region, especially with the eggs and dairy. Um, so th these are some, some big challenges for food security going forward. Um, but I think especially the farmers themselves, you know, every farmer I've ever known lives on a on a knife's edge of profitability. You know, there's always something going wrong. And especially now with climate change, um, there's more there are more and more just daily challenges and, and annual challenges of the, if the temperature is a little too high or if there's a little too moisture. So to have something really catastrophic like this happen is just devastating. Um, you know, a lot of folks are over leveraged, you know, they, they have a lot of loans that allow them to operate or that are invested into uh, into their farms. And so, you know, there are a lot of cascading issues that come with losing a season. Well, we know that this is going to take uh, quite some time for everything to get uh, back to normal, whatever normal is uh, moving forward. But uh, we really appreciate your time and hopefully we can keep this uh, conversation going and keep uh, BC uh, in our hearts and minds and, and all of our viewers as well. Executive Director and Re of Recovery and Relief Services Incorporated, Jeremy Stone, thank you so much uh, for joining us yeah. on CP24 tonight. Thank you very much.